This drama, set in the 1970s, is all about the investigation of a murder. Excuse me. Um, uh, yes, madam? Well, do you think I could see somebody in charge? Well, uh, depends what the problem is. It's my daughter. She didn't come home last night. Oh, yes. How old is she? Nearly 21. Hmm. Does she have a boyfriend? Yes, and he's very concerned as well. Hmm. She isn't with him? Oh, no. I see. What's her name? Julia. Surname? Marsden. And when did you last see your daughter, Mrs. Marsden? Well... I suppose it was the day before yesterday. Well, that'll be Wednesday. Yes. So she hasn't been home for two nights? No. You see, she's a student nurse, yeah. and this week she's on the early shift. She starts work at seven o'clock, so I don't see her in the mornings. So she was home on Wednesday night? Yes. And she didn't say anything that might suggest she wouldn't be coming home last night? Oh, no, of course not. Didn't have an argument, did you? No. Uh, nor with Mr. Marsden? My husband's dead. Uh, you see, the problem is your daughter's of age. Unless she breaks the law, there's nothing we can do to bring her back. Uh, not if she doesn't want to come. But she hasn't left home. She hasn't taken any of her clothes. And we haven't had an argument. We get on well together. Mm. She's happy in her job. She's happy with her boyfriend. Uh, look, Mrs. Martin, you see... Even in a small town like this, lots of young people go missing. <laughs> uh, most of them turn up again safe and sound. Believe me, there's nothing to worry about. But Julia wouldn't run off. She doesn't have reason to. Look, um, have you phoned the hospital? What? The hospital where Julia works. Have you phoned to see if she's turned up for work oh, this morning? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you should do that, don't you? I mean, she could be trying to phone you at this very moment with some sort of explanation. Here, you ring the hospital. <sighs> Did I tell you it's my birthday today? No. I'm 43. Happy birthday. Thanks. Doing anything special tonight, then? No. I might go down to social club for a few beers. That'll be about it. Do you want to come? No, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> How long you been in the force? Nearly twenty years. Ten as detective sergeant. I'm still dreaming of making DI. Uh, why not? I've been passed over too many times. That's why not. It would require an act of considerable merit on my part for my name ever to be taken seriously again at a promotion board. <sighs> oh, I don't know. Been blokes waiting longer than you who've made it. Yeah, but my face doesn't fit anymore. It certainly doesn't fit with people like Armstrong. No, what I want now is, is a job as an advisor with some security firm. You know, sort of thing. Something at twice my present salary, plus expenses, and a firm's car. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? Burgess. Yeah? What? Well, I don't want to see you. How old is she? Yeah, and how long has she been missing? One night. Does she know there's nothing we can do to bring her back? Yeah. Oh, all right, I'll have a word with her. Put her in one of the interview rooms with a cup of tea and a policewoman. Okay, you better bring it in. What's up? A distraught mother who's mislaid her daughter. She's having a nervous breakdown all over the duty, Sergeant. Well, what are you going to do? Have a word with her. Reassure her. You know, the usual cobblers. Oh, there's a photograph. Perhaps you'd like to file it when the Sergeant brings it in. Well, seems she came prepared for the worst. Well, they always do, don't they? Mrs. Marsden? Huh? Yes? I'm Detective Sergeant Burgess. Oh? I've just had a word with the duty, Sergeant, and, uh... Well, whereas I fully appreciate how you must be feeling, there's very little we can do at the moment. But why not? Well, I'm sure the sergeant has already explained most of the reasons to you. Yes, but my 
My daughter hasn't run away. She hasn't taken any of her things with her. I do, Chef, thoroughly. Well, of course I I am. mean, really thoroughly. It's not unknown for someone to leave home and not take their clothes with them. I mean, they're bulky things. Difficult to get out of the house undetected if you want to leave quietly. The sort of thing you want to check on are articles like bank deposit, passbook, valuable jewellery, <laughs> checkbook. Things you wouldn't immediately notice were missing. Now, look, Sergeant. I know you probably think I'm just being an hysterical mother. But I know Julia hasn't run away from home. We get on very well together. She's studying to be a nurse. It's a job she loves. And her final exams are in a few weeks' time. Now, she just wouldn't run away with that about to happen, whatever else was going on in her life. I gather she hasn't gone into work today. No. <laughs> I tell you, right, something awful has happened to her. Uh, please, <laughs> Mrs. Marsden. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. That's all right. Did your daughter go into work yesterday? Yes. Her ward sister said she went off duty at three yesterday afternoon, just as usual. Were you expecting her to come straight home? No, she, she was to meet her boyfriend. I think they were going shopping and then on to the cinema. Only she wasn't there when he went to collect her. Where were they supposed to meet? Oh, I don't know. You'll have to ask him. OK. What's his name? Uh, Raymond Taylor. I, I gave his address to the sergeant. Right. Now, Mrs Marsden, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have a word with Mr Taylor and see if he can shed any light on where your daughter might have gone. It's possible she may have confided in him. I'll also see how patrol cars are given her a photograph. And if she's spotted... We'll ask her to get in touch with you, but I'm afraid after that it's her decision. You do understand that? Yes. But I've got this terrible feeling that she's dead. Now, that's silly. Is it? I don't think so. Aren't you still looking for that man? Who? Oh, you know. That man, the murderer. Oh, you mean the one they call Slippery Sam? Yes. You can forget about him. Well, you never caught him. I know. But we have every reason to believe the man responsible has left the area. Well, how can you know? Because I'm part of the team still working on the case. And let me tell you that via reports, interviews, forensic information, I know as much about that bloke as it's possible to know without actually meeting him. Believe me, Mrs Marsden, he's gone. But he's already killed three women. The last one was five months ago. You have no need to worry about Slippery Sam. Well, why do you call him that? Well, that was the press. You know them, they like to put a handle on everything. And much to our embarrassment, we nearly grabbed him a couple of times. But he was lucky. He managed to slip away. I see. Now, don't worry about it, Mrs Marsden. I'm sure Julia will turn up. All right? Thank you. I'll get a car to take you home. The policewoman can stay with you for a bit if you want. OK. Yes. Well, don't worry. We'll be in touch soon. How did it go? I can't stand women crying. Were you able to reassure her? Oh, I doubt it. I think she's convinced Slippery Sam's got hold of her. Hello? Carpool. This is Sergeant Burgess. Can you arrange for a vehicle to take a Mrs Marsden home? Yeah. She's in interview room two. OK. Uh, try and be quick about it. She's in a bit of a state. Cheers. Is this the uh, daughter? Yeah, not a bad looker. The sort slippery Sam would like. Don't you start. Sorry. Do you want any action taken on this girl? Why not? We haven't got much else to do. Right. I'll get the photograph distributed then. Yeah. Might as well have a word with the boyfriend too. Shall I come along? Well, if you fancy the exercise. Mm. Oh, hello, Mum. Yes, yes, I'm afraid we're still in bed. Mm. Pardon? Are you all right? Are you sure? 
Yes, but what's the matter? Oh, come on, Mum, tell me. Please. All right, let me talk to Malcolm. I'll ring you back in a few minutes. Are you on your own? Why not ask Mrs. Fletcher to come in and keep you company? I'll call back in a little while. What was that about? Oh, I don't know. Well, what did she say? Nothing very much. She was crying. She's always bloody crying. Oh, don't start, Malcolm, please. It's true, though. All right, I know it's true, but this time she sounded really unhappy. She wants me to go up there. Oh, no. This happens nearly every bloody school holiday. You don't have to come. Well, I know, but it would be nice to spend the remainder of half term with you. I'm sorry. I suppose the reason for the tears was your bloody father again. Isn't it always? Why does he always have to go off on the razzle during school well, holidays? Why don't you ask him? Perhaps I might. <sighs> hmm. But she sounded... She really sounded unhappy. Yes. Oh, I suppose you'd better go. I think I should. I'll ring the station and see what time the trains are. Well, don't you want me to come with you? Of course I do. You know I don't cope very well with her on my own. Mm. But you don't have to come if you don't want to. Yeah, well, we'll take the car. I think it should be able to wheeze its way up there one more time. I never liked this new estate much. Why not? I don't know. It's sort of missing. Seems sort of bare. Not quite finished. How do you mean? I don't know. Perhaps it's because there aren't any trees. My wife spent nearly two years trying to persuade me to buy a house up here. I reckon you were wise not to. I sometimes wonder. She'd no sooner stop pestering me about the house than she up and left. Good morning, sir. Raymond Taylor? Yes. I'm Detective Sergeant Burgess. This is Detective Constable Bailey. We did phone, sir. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Come in. Sorry about the mess. Uh, if you throw that stuff on the floor, you can sit down there. Well, I don't know whether you've spoken to Mrs Marsden this morning, but I've already explained to her that there's very little we can do about her daughter's disappearance. Yes, she told me. The only reason I'm here now is to try and get a better picture of what might have happened. I gather you were planning to meet Julia yesterday afternoon. That's right. And what time was that? Well, it was supposed to be about half past three, but I had trouble with my car. I couldn't get it started. So what time did you turn up? Well, not until about ten past four. Where were you planning to meet? I was collecting her from the hospital. Were you surprised she hadn't waited? Well, very surprised. I mean, the car I've got is an old bagger. I'm always having trouble with it. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm more often late than early. Her mother said you were going shopping together. Yes, that's right. Well, there's no chance she might have gone off by herself. You know, frightened the shops might close or something. Oh, I doubt it. We're supposed to be going over to Birmingham. Well, perhaps she just got fed up waiting. She's not like that. She knows if I'm late, there's a good reason. We've been going out for two years now. She knows I never keep her hanging around on purpose. When you found she'd gone, did you go into the hospital and see if she left a message? Well, no. You see, I didn't actually go to the hospital itself. Sir? I haven't explained this very well. You know there's a new one-way system just been introduced around the hospital? Yes. Well, I've not really sorted it out yet. And if you miss the turn off to Birmingham, you have to go all the way around before you can turn off again. So where did you arrange to meet her? On the corner of Fitzgerald Road. Which end? Um, at the junction with Chandos Road. That's a fair old walk, in it? Well, I suppose it is. Well, it's just that it's easier for me. What would Julia have been wearing? Sorry? What was she likely to be wearing yesterday afternoon? I mean, would she have changed, or would she have met you in her uniform? Well, she usually changes if we're going out somewhere. So she would have taken clothes into work with her? I suppose so. Well, I've never really thought about it. Oh. I suppose you've no idea where she is. No. I'd tell her mother if I did. And you didn't have an argument with her yesterday afternoon? Well, of course I didn't. I didn't see her. Not even when you got to Birmingham? You didn't leave her there, did you? No. OK. Don't look so worried. You don't think I've done anything to her? I doubt it. How does she get on with her mother? Fine. Argue much? Well, Julia never mentioned it if she did. And she has not said anything to you in the recent past that might suggest she wanted to leave home? No. Even if it was only to go off for a few days by herself? She just isn't the sort of person who would do that. Not without saying something first. She's too considerate. And why should she want to leave home anyway? Well, ask her when we find her. Until then, 
Thanks very much for your help. Well, what happens now? We'll keep an eye open for her. Don't worry. We'll let you know as soon as we learn something. Well, isn't there anything else you can do? I'm afraid not, sir. Do you want to stop for lunch? I don't think so. I'd rather keep going. You know, it amazes me how that marriage manages to stagger on. Well, this time I'm going to find out why it does. I mean, this must be the fourth time in a year this has happened. Mum can't go on like this. Neither can we. Mm. I wonder why he stays. What do you mean? Well, if he can still pull the birds with the easy seems to, why doesn't he shove off altogether? I don't know. I can't believe he even likes her very much now. He always comes back. Not only because she's stupid enough to forgive him. I don't know why she doesn't kick him out of it. She could hardly be worse off than she is now. Burgess. Oh, hello, Mrs. Marsden. Have you? Was there anything missing? I see. Hang on, I'll just make a note. Jeans. Navy blue polo neck sweater. Twin soles. And what? A black duffel coat. Nothing else. None of her personal effects. I see. What about her uniform? Yeah. Okay. Well, many thanks, Miss... Sure, don't worry. We'll be in touch as soon as we learn anything. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Marsden. Yeah. Goodbye. God, that woman does go on. Well, you can't blame her. That still doesn't make it any easier to put up with. Is uh, this what you might be wearing? Yeah. Black duffel coat, navy blue pullover, jeans and plimsolls. That'll make her really conspicuous. Especially the jeans and plimsolls. No personal effects missing. No. So let's hope she hurries up back. Well, if this is accurate, I think it unlikely Sam's got hold of her. What is it? Sighting of the said villain. Where? Madrid. <laughs> Where did that come from? It's <laughs> with the Interpol stuff are coming this morning. He gets around, doesn't he? The last place was Geneva. Do you, uh, think the super will let us check it out? You must be joking. He wouldn't sanction a trip for you to put flowers on your mother's grave on your day off. Yeah, it could be right. Come on, let's go and have something to eat. I'll treat you to lunch down at the Swan. Oh, birthday lunch. Why not? We can try their real ale. It's supposed to be quite good. Oh, bugger it. If it's the D.I. complaining about you were spelling again, you'll be buying the lunch. Burgess. Yeah? Where? Walton Woods. Have you told the heavy brigade? What about Mr. Armstrong? Right. No, I'm going straight up there. Now what? Someone's found a body at Walton Woods. these sort of things always happen just when you're about to go to lunch. If this is Sam's handiwork, you'll be bloody glad you missed it. <sighs> Sutton? Yes, Kit? Is the dock here yet? Yeah, he's up at the side. What's he like? As usual. Well, that's something to look forward to. The control van's been quick in getting here. Then our Lord and Master is in residence. We need not fear anything, except his breath. I don't think I've ever got that close to Armstrong. You're very wise. His breath's so bad, you wish he had a simple case of halitosis. Why does Armstrong cause you so much needle? He just gets up my nose. Do you know, he once called me an incompetent snotbag. He calls everybody that. It's part of his childish charm. I know, but when he said it to me, he meant it. You're too sensitive. I'm not. It's not without reason he keeps blocking my promotion. He meant it all right. And it wasn't until he started doing that I realised how bloody ambitious I was. Uh, well, collar Sam, they'll probably make you chief superintendent. Collar him and I'll expect to be made bloody king. Hello, Doc. You don't look too cheerful. Neither will you be when you see the state the body's in. That bad, eh? That bad. Have you finished with it? Yes. Do you mind if we have a look? If you want. Oh. You were right. It is bad. Is it a sudden killing? Without considerably more work, I can't tell you anything for certain. But I think so. Head bashed in. Badly mutilated face and chest. Plus strangulation. That's my boy. She been raped? Yes. How long she been dead? Difficult to tell at the moment. In such a cold night, it's affected the decomposition. But I think between 24 and 36 hours. Any idea? Not yet. Could it be her? 
You saw the face. How can I possibly tell? Have a good look. If it is her, we can get things moving much faster. I realize that, but I can't help you. Who is she? Julia Marsden. She went missing yesterday. I can't say if it's the same person. Okay, Doc. Thanks. Oh, one thing. Any of her clothing left? The remains of a pair of jeans, blue pullover, not much else. What about a black duffel coat? Not that I've seen. Okay. Perhaps you'd care to tell Superintendent Armstrong that I finished. Sure. That the sooner he gets the body to the lab, the sooner he'll have my report. I'll do that. And thanks for your help, Doc. That's all right. She was in a mess, wasn't she? They all are. Is this the first of Sam's work you've seen? Yeah. Let's hope it's the last. Hello, Mum. Jenny. Oh, it's really nice to see you, love. I'm so glad you could come. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Malcolm. Oh, you don't know how pleased I am you could both come. Come in, come in. Come into the sitting room. Uh, would you like some tea? That would be nice. Shall I make it? No, you sit down. I'd rather make it. It gives me something to do. Well, all right, then. Do you know where everything is? I should do. I've been here often enough. Is he all right? Of course. Only he seemed a bit strange. <laughs> oh, Malcolm's fine. You know what he's like. Don't worry about him. He's just a bit tired after the drive. Anyway, we're not here to discuss him. I know. And I'm sorry the way I phoned up this morning. Oh, it's all right, Mum. Don't you worry about it. I felt so unhappy. What's happened? The usual. Dad? Yes. I haven't seen him since Thursday evening. Do you know where he is? I've no idea. That's what's so worrying. I usually know what he's up to. How do you mean? Well, you know what he's like when he meets someone he takes a fancy to. Starts taking extra trouble about the way he looks, always changing his underwear. Shaves twice a day, that sort of thing. That's usually followed by him staying out half the night, having to entertain clients, as he calls it. <sighs> then the inevitable trip that necessitates him having to go away for the weekend. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic to see him at work. It sounds bloody insulting. You're probably right. But anyway, this time there hasn't been anything. No hints, nothing. I've not got the faintest idea where he is. Have you tried to phone him at work? Well, that's the first thing I did, but he isn't there. The person I spoke to said he was on leave. And they didn't know where he'd gone? No. Have you spoken to the police? <laughs> what could I say? My husband's gone on holiday and hasn't bothered to tell me where. <laughs> they just laughed. It's possible he's had an accident. The police could at least check the hospitals for you. Oh, don't say that, Jenny. I think you should consider it. Kettle's on. Thank you. Well, this time that bastard of a father of mine has gone off without saying anything. That's nothing new. But Mum's got absolutely no idea where he's gone. I think we should phone the police. Why? He might have had an accident. Forget about it. He'll turn up when he's good and ready. He always does. I don't think we should bother the police, Jenny. I'll phone the hospital in a little while. Anyway, from the amount of police activity we saw as we drove into town, I doubt whether they'd give much consideration to looking for some overgrown schoolboy on the razzle. Oh, shut up, Malcolm. What do you mean? It's nothing. It's just that we saw a lot of police cars in a field as we came off the motorway. Oh, what were they doing? I don't know. It was probably nothing important. Well, it's nice to get a bit of warm. Any tea going? You must be joking. This is Armstrong's control van. Vitriol's the only thing that's proved here. Where have you two been? I told you. I beg your pardon, sir. We took your bloody time getting here. Oh, sorry. We were having a word with the doctor. Has he finished? Yes. He said you can move the body as soon as you like. I wish that quack would report directly to me. I'll tell him for future references. Don't you bother. I'll tell him yourself. Anyway, what do you have to say? Nothing much. Although he did reluctantly say he thought Sam was responsible. Ah. So, he's back. And with a vengeance, it seems. Yeah, only this time we're going to collar him, and before he needs to kill again. It's possible we might have a slight edge on him this time. Yeah? How come? Well, this could be his victim. What makes you think that? Well, it's as much a feeling as anything. Well, this girl was reported missing this morning. She's a student nurse at the local hospital. So? Well, she doesn't fit in the usual pattern of girls that have scummed. She's got a fairly stable home, very much involved in her job, got a regular boyfriend, all that sort of thing. Yeah. In fact, on the surface of it, she's got no reason to leave home at all. Neither has she taken any personal possessions with her. You've checked this out? As far as I can. Mm. Have you seen the body? Yeah, but the face is too bashed to bear to identify her. Yeah. All right. Well, mark her up as a possibility. Talk to the parents again. There's only a mother. 
Well, then talk to her. You, Bailey, find out who a doctor and dentist are and get on to the hospital where she worked. It's likely they'll at least know the colour of her blood, if nothing else. Right, sir. Burgess, go careful when you talk to the mother. We've had enough trouble with the bloody press without them accusing us of terrifying respectable old ladies into believing their daughters are dead. There's still every possibility she's alive and well and making her way straight towards Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, how is she? She'll be all right. Although she's a bit exhausted. I don't think she slept at all last night. Do you want a hand? I'm nearly finished. There's no need to dry up. Just let the stuff drain. I thought I might ring the doctor. At least he can give her something to help her sleep. Yeah. Oh, I hate that man. My bloody father. If only he knew the pain he caused. I must admit I'm a bit surprised she still reacts like this. I mean, this must be the fourth time he's gone off for a dirty weekend in a year. I know. But it's a bit different this time. There was none of the usual build-up. He's just upped and gone. Do you think he's left her? Oh, I don't know. Mum's convinced herself he hasn't. It amazes me how I can still pull the birds at his age. He may be 52, but as you well know, he looks ten years younger. And he could churn the knickers off a nun if he wanted. I'm going to phone the doctor. All right, hey. And when he gets here, I suggest you ask him for something for yourself. Mm. Oh, I'm mm. oh, oh, tired. Mm. Yes? Mr. Armstrong gone. About an hour ago. I think he said he was going back to the Nick. Oh, I'm hungry. I could do with something as well. I think yes. we're still wanted here. Well, I'm Very certainly good. not. Perhaps we could slip out for a bit. Pubs are open. That's not a bad idea. I'll have a word with the DI. I reckon he heard you. Burgess? Yes, yeah, go. Just have Mr. Armstrong on the phone. He wants you back at the Nick at once. What's so? He just identified the victim. Who is it? Seems you are right. It's Julia Marsden. So get your ass back there quick and take Bailey with you. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, come in. I suppose you've heard. I have. Here's a pathologist's report. Makes much the same reading as the other Sam murders. Have you told the girl's mother yet? Not yet. I've sent a car to fetch her. When I spoke to Mrs. Marsden this morning, I asked her to check to see whether any of Julia's clothes were missing. And? Well, apart from jeans and a pullover, there was a black duffel coat. I wondered if it had been found. Hmm, hang on. Hello. This is Armstrong. Did you find a black duffel coat this afternoon? Yeah. Can you check the list, then? I suppose it could be at the hospital. Well, it isn't. This is the contents of a locker. Uniform, shoes, towel, a couple of magazines. Yeah? Ah, are you sure? Ah. No duffel coat. Hardly something you'd miss. <laughs> you don't know the snot bags are up there this afternoon. Some of them wouldn't notice a steamroller parked in Westminster Abbey. Look, Burgess, I know we've not got on too well in the past, but I'm prepared to forget about that. You responded well when Julia Marsden was reported missing. He looks good in a report when it's seen we've taken action from the very beginning. Keeps the press happy. Helps remove some of the tarnish from our somewhat green image. Right. Yes, sir. I gather you've already had a word with a boyfriend. I don't think we've anything to worry about there. Good. Now, look, I want you to lead one of the teams on this case. Select your own men if you want. But I want results. If Sam's on our patch this time, I want him. I don't want the press rechristening him Slippery Slippery Sam. Understood? Yes. But don't you let me down, Burgess. I'm putting my faith in you. You screw up on me and there'll be trouble. You work well and I'll make sure the right people hear about it. Because if we grab Sam, there'll be a lot of promotion handed out. You may well see Detective Inspector yet. I'll look forward to it. Good. And one more thing. Don't forget I'm in charge of this case. As if I would. You're only leading your team. You get your nose stuck into something, you let me know. You try and rush off on your own glory hunting. And I'll crush you. The glory's to be spread around on this case, not hogged. Understood? Of course. Good. Then we'll get on fine. Right, you let me know who you want in your team and I'll OK it. Right? Sure. There's a briefing tomorrow morning at nine. Should you have any bright thoughts during the night, let me hear them then. What are you looking at? There's a police car pulled up along the road. They're not coming here, are they? 
No. Oh, thank God for that. I don't think I could stand any more today. Where have they gone? Over there. See where the whole light's just gone up. Oh. A hell of a lot of police activity for such a piddling little town. You're not worried about the car, are you? Well, as long as they don't look too close. And you know who lives over there? I think it's Mrs. Marsden's house. Well, you seem pleased with yourself. I am. I've just been having words with Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah? He wants me to lead one of the teams on this sum killing. You're joking. I'm not. Suddenly, he loves me. But why the change of heart on his part? This morning you were saying he hated your guts. He still does. But he liked the way I followed things up on Julia Marsden. I mean, I could have just shoved the report into a drawer. Everybody else would have. Hey, but you only went to see the boyfriend to get out of the office. He doesn't know that, does he? You jammy beggar. Yeah, well... All right, it was a bit of luck, but that's how most things happen, innit? And it's certainly a bit of luck I intend to take advantage of. Especially as Armstrong reckons there could be a lot of promotion handed out to the team of breaks this case. I must admit it would be very nice to be a D.I. But, uh, I thought you were going into the, uh, Bogart business. I'm serious. This could be our big chance. Yeah, it could be. Aren't you getting a bit carried away? Why? Well, we'd just be one team among many. What if Armstrong gives us the bum end of the case? There's not much chance for us if we spend all our time sweeping up after everyone else. Armstrong's desperate to break this case. It's been hanging over him for a year. So? So he'll be open to all suggestions. So what are you planning to wow him with? Remember the interview with the boyfriend? Yeah. Do you remember he was supposed to be meeting her on the corner of Fitzgerald and Chandler's Road, and that he was late? So? Well, he gave the impression that Julia was the sort of woman who would have waited patiently for him. But she didn't. She went off. Yes, but after waiting how long? He was 40 minutes late. She could have waited anything up to a couple of minutes before he arrived. And you're hoping someone might have seen her? That's it. But more important, that someone might have seen Sam pick her up on that corner. After all, she got into the car somewhere. Yeah, that's true. So what I'm going to suggest to Armstrong in the morning is that my team knocks on the door of every house in the Fitzgerald Chandler's Road area. Some nosy Parker might have seen what went on. You reckon Armstrong will let you handle it? Why not? Someone will have to. Why not the bloke who suggested it? Uh, what time's the briefing tomorrow? Nine o'clock. God, it's been a long day. Mm. How long do you think we'll have to stay? I don't know. I suppose we can't stay longer than Sunday. Mm. Depends what happens. Hey, just think. At this very moment, your dad is probably shacked up in some hotel, humping his current bird without a care in the world. Mm. Well, let's hope he stays with her this time. Do you think your mum will take him back? I don't know. She's pretty hurt. I think she realises things can't go on like this. Mm. Let's just hope he writes soon so we can all get on with our lives again. Mm. I'm nearly asleep. You feel all right? Mm. Gin and Valium are certainly a very good mix. Good night. Burgess? Sir? How many men will you need for this house to house thing of yours? As many men as you can spare. Ah, uh, the way things are going, you might be working alone. I need every man I can get hold of to search those woods again. The duffel coat's definitely missing. Mrs. Marsden's convinced it is, so I suppose we've got to do something about it. <laughs> Did I have a session with her? It's all about crying. She went on and on. I had to get a bloody doctor to her in the end. Where is she now? They're taking her into hospital, women's medical. <laughs> There's a bloody irony. Mm. It's the ward her daughter was working on. <laughs> Hope to God nobody tells her. The coat into the hospital, is it? No. I had a team in there this morning taking the locker room to pieces and another lot interviewing the stuff. Are you going to get any outside helping? You must be joking. This is a local affair. I want it kept that way. So every man's going to have to work twice as hard as usual. Oh, that's something to look forward to. Should you work three times as hard as usual, Bailey, you should just about turn in a reasonable day's work. All right? Give me five minutes, Burgess. I'll come back to you on how many men you can have. Right, sir. What did I say? Too much. Armstrong doesn't like silly remarks. I should have thought you'd learn that by now. Obviously not. Well, there's one thing I have. Well, you were right about his breath. Oh, shut up. Find me a road map. I want to work out how we're going to approach this house-to-house -house thing. What's the matter? 
I feel rather strange. How do you mean? Sort of light-headed. Oh, that's probably the side effects of the drugs you took. Oh. Would you like some more tea? Uh, no, I don't think so. Has the postman been? Um, I don't know. Yeah, he passed a few minutes ago. Oh, perhaps there'll be something in the second post. Yes. Actually, I think I'll go and lie down. Can you manage? Of course I can. I'm not an invalid. I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, if she's going to behave like that, I hope we hear something soon. So do I. I assume we're not going back tonight. I certainly can't. Well, I'm not leaving you here alone. I'll give Charlie a ring, say we can't make it. I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter. Here, see what's on at the local flea pit. Perhaps you can persuade your mother to go out for the evening. I doubt it. Oh, no. What's the matter? Have you seen the headlines? No. There's been a murder. <laughs> Come on, love. What? Why are you... It's Julia. She's been murdered. Who's she? Mrs Marsden's daughter. Across the road? Yes. Julia's dead and I knew her. I knew her. Oh. <sighs> what a tone. What? Bloody hell. It's brass monkey weather out there. How's it going? We're on both sides of Chandis Road. Move the lads into Merritt Street. Good. Any houses you didn't get an answer from? No, there was someone in all of them. The other good thing about that road is that the houses are all owner-occupied. So the people who aren't at home will get to hear about what we're after. Might get a call later on. Let's hope so. How's it going along here? Not so good. Sixteen houses with no one at home, which include the two on the corner. If anyone saw Julia hanging about, it would be someone in either of those houses. Well, let's hope the occupiers haven't gone away. I don't think so. There's milk on both doorsteps. What sort of reaction are you getting? Quite strong. A lot of people are very angry. I suppose it's not surprising. It is Sam's fourth. And they're bloody scared. I've actually had three women open the doors on the chain. <laughs> New York-style living comes to this great little town of Wallingbridge. Who knows? They'll be issuing us with guns next. Who'd give a burke like you a gun? Why not? I've been on the gun course. I've got a distinction, as a matter of fact. You've done the gun course? Yeah, about 18 months ago. I haven't. There you are, then. There you are what? They realise my potential. Potential what? I reckon they want to get rid of you. How come? The only time you'll get a gun is when they send you up against a raving psycho, and he'll probably blow your bloody head off before you can get it out of your pocket. Now, that's not a very nice thing to say. Well, what do you expect? I'm jealous. I want to know why I haven't been on a gun course. Perhaps because you didn't apply. You could be right. <laughs> now, but seriously, do you think they'll issue guns? What, for Sam? No, he only strangles women. They'll get Armstrong to breathe on him if it comes to the showdown. <laughs> hey, up. What? Woman, just got into number three. Come on. Yes? Good morning, madam. I'm Detective Sergeant Burgess. This is Detective Constable Bailey. <laughs> We're making inquiries concerning the death of Julia Marsden. Julia Marsden? Do I know her? That's what we're hoping to find out. Oh, you'd better come in. Thank you. Oh, would you mind wiping your feet thoroughly? I've just had the whole carpet shampooed. Oh. Sorry. Thank you. If you'd like to come this way. Now, Julia Marsden. Uh, this is a photograph of her. Mm, no, I don't know her. Now, think carefully. You didn't by any chance see this person standing on the corner of Fitzgerald Road on Wednesday afternoon? No. You're quite sure? Positive. Although, now you come to mention it, I do recall a young woman. But it wasn't the girl in the photograph. What time was that? Oh, about a quarter to four. In fact, I remember her quite distinctly. And why is that? Oh, she looked so cold, as though she'd been waiting some time. I felt quite sorry for her. In fact, I must have stared because she noticed me looking and smiled. It was quite a charming smile. 
But you don't recognise the photograph as being the same girl you saw waiting? Oh, no. The girl in the photograph is far less attractive. Do you remember what she was wearing? No. Oh, yes. I recall she was wearing plimsolls. I remember that quite distinctly, as I consider them totally unsuitable footwear for such a cold day. That's all? You can't remember anything else she was wearing? Yes, I can. A duffel coat. I recall a duffel coat. I remember that because I thought the duffel coat so sensible and the plimsoll so foolish. Can you remember the colour? No. I, I think it was dark. Possibly dark blue or black. I can't remember for certain. But you're sure about the time you saw her? Oh, yes. Uh, how can you be so certain? Well, when I got in, I unpacked my shopping and made myself a cup of tea. I then took the tea upstairs to my bedroom and switched my radio on. And? Listen to the four o'clock news. Did you see the girl again? As a matter of fact, I did. When I was closing my curtains. When was that? It was after the news. Why is the time so important? The young lady in the photograph and the girl you saw waiting outside could well be the same person. Oh, I don't think so. The photographs can be deceptive. Why are you so interested in this person? Because she's been murdered. Good heavens. Well, that's absolutely dreadful. When you saw her from the bedroom window, was she still alone? Yes. No, as a matter of fact, a car pulled up. I remember now. She walked over to the car, smiling. It was the same smile she'd given me. Such a pretty smile. But then she looked surprised and uh, spoke for a minute or two to the driver. Did she get into the car? Yes, she did. And can you remember anything about the car? Oh, yes. It was a dark blue Cortina estate. You're that sure? Without a doubt. How come? My son-in-law has exactly the same make of car. I see. Look, uh, Mrs... Uh, Meadows. Yeah, Mrs Meadows. I think we should start getting some of this down on paper. Would you have any objection to coming down to the station to make a statement? Well, um, I don't think so. Mrs Meadows, I'm Superintendent Armstrong. How do you do? Sorry I've kept you waiting so long, but I've been studying your statement. A very interesting document. You're a very observant woman. Thank you. Uh, there are just one or two things I'd like to go over with you again. And now, you still maintain that the girl you saw getting into the car and the young lady in the photograph are not the same person? Without a doubt. Then perhaps you'd like to look at these. Story them carefully. Now, do any of these photographs look like the girl you saw? Um, yes, that one. Hmm. Any of the others? Um... Uh, that one too. Thank you. And what about these other photographs? They're not of the same person, are they? No. Fortunately for us, you've recognised the two photographs we wanted you to. They're Julia Marsden. The others are just there to confuse. But the two I've chosen are nothing like the first photograph that was shown to me. Ah, that was a studio portrait. They tend to flatter. But, uh, there's no doubt in your mind that these two photographs are of the person you saw getting into the car? None. Good. Now, there's your identification of the car. You were so sure it was a blue Cortina estate. There's no doubt in my mind at all. Do you know much about cars? Absolutely nothing. If I were to show you some photographs of current popular cars, would you be able to name them? I very much doubt it. <laughs> then why are you so sure it was a blue Cortina estate? As I explained to your sergeant, my son-in-law drives one. Perhaps you'd like to have a look at these. Is there a court in estate amongst those photographs? Oh dear. That one and that one. Thank you. It's a great pity you seem to doubt my word. <laughs> not at all. It's just that we must confirm that you're not mistaken. I rarely am mistaken. I'm beginning to believe it, Mrs. Matters. Would you like to test my ability as to whether I can recognise the colour blue? I don't think so. Now, you say in your statement that you noticed a sticker in the back window of the car. That is correct. What did the sticker say? Oh, really, this is becoming ridiculous, Superintendent. I've already told the sergeant all this. I realise that, and I, I must ask you to bear with me for just a little longer. <laughs> You're a very important witness. Uh, but before we can act on your information, we must make doubly sure we have everything crystal clear. Hmm? Now, what did the sticker say? 
Well, I don't actually remember it verbatim, but the gist of it was that the owner of the car thought that the local grammar school should not go comprehensive. Are you sure about that? I certainly am, as it's a statement I'm in total agreement with. I see. Only a fool would want such a fine school to go comprehensive. Did you notice anything else about the car? Were there any dents or scratches? No. Mm, and you didn't notice any parts of the registration number? No. Not even the year letter? I would have told you if I had. Uh, right. One last question, Mrs Meadows. The driver of the car, did you see him? Not really. I caught a glimpse of his profile. Do you think you'd recognise him again? I can't really say. It was just a glimpse. Well, it's possible if I were to see him in similar circumstances, I might just recognise him. But I'm not certain. OK, Mrs Meadows, thank you very much. There's just one more thing I'd like you to do before we take you home. In the next room, we have some photographs that I'd like you to look at. It's just possible you might recognise one of them as the driver. If you wouldn't mind. Of course not. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you think I could telephone my husband? Uh, of course. There's a phone next door. Oh, I've met some self-opinionated old bitches in my time, but she takes bloody first prize. What is she right? Mm, I think so. Or at least I'm confident enough to act on it. You've done well, Burgess. Bloody well. Thank you, sir. Now, I want one of you to get on to DVLC at Swansea and get them to provide me with a list of all blue Ford Cortinas registered in this area. How uh, can you be certain it's a local car, sir? The sticker. The grammar school this year is totally a local matter. The chances of an out-of-town car carrying such a thing are almost nil. It also seems from the way Julia reacted to the car, she must have known the driver. Hmm. Anyway, get onto that list immediately. I want it today, if possible. Right, sir. Uh, what about the team searching for the duffel coat? Have uh, they found anything yet? No. And I'm almost hoping they don't now. Because if it's not in the wood, there's a good chance it'll be in the murderer's car. Are you awake, Mum? Yes. I've made some tea. Oh, that's nice. How do you feel now? Much better. Good. Did I hear you crying? That was this morning. You've been asleep all day. Have I? Oh, dear. And there's nothing to worry about. That was me just being silly. What was the matter? It was just something I read in the paper. You and Malcolm are all right, aren't you? Of course. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Oh, it's just that I find Malcolm a bit difficult to understand. He's a bit brusque at times. But he's very caring in his own way. Does he love you? I think so. But you don't want to worry about us. Oh, you know me, I always worry too much. What does Malcolm think about your dad? Well, he's not very pleased about the way he behaves. But that's only because it upsets me so much. And he certainly doesn't understand why you put up with it. Come to that, neither do I. Your dad's a strange man. It's like a little boy in many ways. How long has he been carrying on like this? Oh, I suppose for about five years. As long as that? It is a long time, isn't it? But although he wasn't as bad as this to begin with. Why do you think he started? Lots of reasons, I suppose. I think he realised he was beginning to get old. He wanted some sort of fling before he was past it. I didn't blame him. I often felt like that myself. Did you do anything about it? Well, once. I'm pleased to hear it. The thing is that when your dad started, he found there were far more women available than he'd ever dreamed possible. I think it must have gone to his head. Did you consider leaving him? Not then. Because in the early days he was discreet. Oddly enough, I wasn't even jealous. I didn't feel threatened because he was having a little bit on the side. Then about 18 months ago, he took up steady with someone. We even talked about a divorce. 
and then she chucked him over. I think it upset him a good deal because that's when he started behaving really badly. Oh, I suppose I should have told him to go. Why didn't you? I don't know. I think I was scared of being alone. Do you still love him? Not really. But we've been married for nearly 30 years. It's a long time. <laughs> a lot of habit to throw away. But surely you realise it's getting out of hand now. I know. This is the fourth time in 12 months he's gone off like this. I realise that. But this is the first time he's actually gone without letting me know what was happening. And I'm worried about him. Do you think he's left you? I'm sure he would have said. I can't believe he'd go off without a word. If he comes back... Are you going to let him stay? Yes. Why? Because he can't go on like this for much longer. The years are beginning to catch up with him. He'll have to stop soon. And then we'll be back together. I'd much rather enter old age with him than by myself. I'm... So scared of being alone, Jenny. But that's pathetic, Mum. Don't you think I realise that? How do you spell necessity? You must ask me that twice a week. I keep forgetting, you know I've got no head for words. Just write need instead. I can't put that. My bloody reports are short enough as it is. I mean necessity has a certain ring about it. Needs a nothing word. I thought you said you had O-level English. I didn't say that. Then what have you got? Well, sort of doubtful CSE. Here you are. Necessity. Don't lose it. Any sign of that list from Swansea? No, sir. I doubt if it'll come tonight. Lazy bastards probably knock off at five. You might as well push off home as well. Right. Did I find the duffel coat, sir? No. It'll be a new development if Sam started nicking things from his victims. Hmm. I see. I'm off, then. Good night. Good night, sir. Cheerless bastard. For God's sake, Malcolm, stop staring out of the window. People are still leaving floral tributes at Mrs Marsden's place. So what? It's the only way they've got of showing they care. I should save on the weeds and just leave them money. When Mrs. Marsden comes home from hospital and sees her front garden full of flowers, it will say considerably more than a pile of little envelopes containing money. Hmm. Oh, you're so cynical at times. The woman has just had her only daughter murdered. If you can only make snide remarks about it, I suggest you shut up. I'm sorry. Oh, so am I. It's not only Mum being so unhappy that's depressing me. It's the whole atmosphere of this town. Well, having a murderer on the loose doesn't help much. It's not even that. I never liked the place, not even when I was a child. I think we should get Mum away from here for a while. Hmm? If I can persuade her, how would you feel about letting her come to stay with us? Ah. Well, I wouldn't mind. Well... <laughs> as long as she's prepared to share the spare bedroom with the junk. I don't think that'll bother her. But more important, are you up to coping with her? I'll certainly be able to cope with her much better at home. Right, invite her. Ask her tomorrow and see what she says. All right. Sorry I'm late. I overslept. Yeah, well, you weren't the only one. Oh, well, this is just a right. Oh, good. Let's hope it contains what we want. Have you seen Mr Armstrong this morning? Uh, he passed by muttering something about a press conference. Oh, that'll set him up nicely for the day. Why does he hate the press so much? Because he's a good, honest, no-nonsense fascist. He thinks there's only one way to run the world, his way, with no questions asked. Journalists sometimes spoil that illusion. Ah. Oh, on computer, readouts, neat. Well, I'm more concerned about the work that thing means. How many Cortina estates are there in this area? I don't know. Though it doesn't seem to be as many as I thought to be. 
Is there a briefing this morning? Yeah, the DI's taking it. Well, I think we can give that a miss. We've got enough to do sorting this thing out. How are you going to divide it up? By area is the most obvious way. Get a couple of the... Hang on. What's up? What's Mrs. Marsden's address? Um, 29 Bridge Road. Well, well, well. There's a bit of luck. What? One of the characters listed here lives in Bridge Road. And what was it Mrs. Meadows said? Julia approached the car as though she knew the driver. Dear. Ah, oh, it's not going to be that easy, is it? It could be. It just could be. Oh, I know there was a reason why I woke up smiling this morning. I think that is definitely an address we'll check out ourselves. Right. Let's get the rest of this list divided up, collect ourselves a couple of uniform lads, and we'll be off. This is it. Bridge Road. Drive past the house. I want to have a look first. Right. You two in the back, take your helmets off. I don't want to advertise the fact with you. And there's the car. The house looks quiet. Well, we'll be expecting a mad axeman dancing naked on the lawn. Pull over. Right. We have a neat little semi-detached house. While the detective constable and myself are knocking on the front door, I want you two to slip quietly around the back, just in case this is Sam's address and he tries to make a bolt for it. OK? Well, the stick is where it's supposed to be. Mm. That's a good beginning. Yes? Is John Arnold Maitland in the house? No. Are you sure? Of course I am. He's my husband. May we come in? Who are you? Police. But what on earth? This is Detective Constable Bailey. Do you mind if he has a look upstairs? What for? Don't worry. He isn't going to steal anything. Go careful. Right. What is it you want? Just a word with your husband. I told you, he isn't at home. What's in here? Well, it's the sitting room, but... Can I have a look? Well, if you must. And that uh, room? The kitchen. Do you mind if I let a couple of my friends in? Tell me what it is you want, please. Did you check the shed? Yes, sir. Uh, nothing. Good. You wait here. But you have the right to charge into my house like this. I was under the impression you invited it. Not to rampage around it. Don't worry, we won't do any damage. Perhaps we could go into the sitting room. <laughs> I shall see that your superior hears about this. What's your name? Burgess. Can you prove that? Certainly. What is it you want? Where's your husband, Mrs. Maitland? He isn't here. I know that, so where is he? Away. Where? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not sure. He, he travels around so much. Is he usually away over weekends? Oh, sometimes. He's a very busy man. And you don't know where he's gone? Not for certain. Well, he, he usually rings me to say where he's staying. But he hasn't let you know this time. Not yet. Well, it's already Sunday. He can't think much of That's you. That's none of your business. Possibly not. How long's he been away? <laughs> He, he went up on Thursday. Do you know when he's coming back? I'm not sure. Next week sometime. There's no one upstairs, Skip. OK. What's all this about? I'm sure you're not allowed to come into people's homes and behave the way you have. You invited but us. But why do you want to see my husband? Has he done something wrong? We're not sure. We're conducting certain inquiries, and we would just like to talk to him. <laughs> why won't you tell me what it's about? Because we feel we should discuss the matter with him first. <sighs> then I've nothing more to say to you. Is the blue court in an estate parked outside your husband's? What of it? Does he own the car or is it his firm's? I'm not saying anything else. Skip. Excuse me. Well, fingerprint boys think they've got a match. Julia Marsden? Yes. They're positive? Oh, yes. Their smugness confirms it. Careful with that car! Forensic have still got to examine it. Burgess. See? I've got one more job for you here. Now what? The stake Mrs. Maitland's in, I didn't get much sense out of her, which means you two are going to have to go through Maitland's things. Diaries, papers, anything that might establish where he was at the time of the other Sam killings. Right. Anything that looks at all interesting, bring it down to the nick. We'll sort it out there. <laughs> Look at the street. Neighbours hanging out of the windows. Right mess they made of getting Dad's car onto the transporter. Ridiculous. I wish I could smile. Are those two policemen still in Mum's room? Yes. They said they'd be there for a while. Where's she gone? She's lying down in our room. I don't think she'll ever recover from this. Well, we'll take her home with us as soon as possible. Get her away from this house. Oh, Malcolm. You don't think Dad's a murderer? I find it difficult to believe. Surely, when you're as disturbed as the murderer must be, you you can't just hide it like that. Oh, 
God, I'm so unhappy. Well, let's hope they find him soon. Get things sorted out. It's amazing how much junk you can pour into one of these little writing desks. Yeah, well, at least he's neat. Let's hope he's methodical as well. Are you listening to the stuff you're dumping in that sack? Of course I am. What's that supposed to be? One diary. Then why have you written one dairy? Can't you spell at all? Oh, don't start. I'm tired. It's been a bloody long day. For all of us, mate. Yeah, but you enjoy this sort of thing. I mean, going through a bloke's personal paper is hardly a bundle of laughs, is it? It's part of the job. But it's a part of the job I don't like. Just as I don't like looking at the bashed-in face of the young women. You'll get used to it. But I don't want to. Come in. I can't sleep. Come in, Mum. We can't either. Wondering where he might be. Trying to remember whether he mentioned anywhere before he went off. When did you last see him? Thursday evening. He popped in for a little while. Fiddled about in the bedroom, then went out again. And didn't come back? No. Didn't you say he started his leave Wednesday evening? Yes. And he was out all day Thursday? That's right. You've no idea where? I thought he'd gone to work. He left at his usual time. Did he take the car on Thursday? Yes. Uh, and when he was here, did he seem himself? What do you mean? Well, did he seem excited or agitated? Don't know. I I didn't say much to him. What are you getting at? Oh, nothing, really. I was just wondering where he was on Thursday, that's all. You don't think he killed that girl? Of course I don't. Then why are you asking me all these questions? I've had questions all afternoon from the police. I'm sick to death of being interrogated. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to sound like that. John hasn't done anything wrong. He's just gone away for a little while. Oh, of course he has, Mum. And why have you started calling me Mum? You've always called me Maureen before. It just came up. I suppose it's just a feeling of solidarity. Well, stop it. I don't want your support if you think my husband's a murderer. I don't think that. Come on, Mum. We're on your side. You don't need to fight us. How do I know? How can I tell what you're really thinking? Look, I think you should get away from this house. I'll phone the police tomorrow morning and see if you can come home with us. Mm. I don't want it. It would be better for you. It would get you right away from everything, give you a chance to rest. I'm staying here. This is my home. And I'm not running away from it. No one's asking you to run away. Just come home with us for a few days' rest. I don't want to. And if you think my husband's a murderer, I don't want you here either. Sure, I understand, Mr. Freeman. Sure. Well, there's no doubt. Okay. Many thanks for your help. Goodbye. Bloody hell. Now yeah, what? That was Maitland's employer. He confirms the diary entries is correct. The week of the first killing, Maitland was in Edinburgh on some course. The week of the third killing, he was in Spain on holiday with his wife. Oh. And to cap it all, Maitland hasn't run off. He's only on bloody leave. Due back a week today. Seems we've boobed again. We've boobed? What was Armstrong doing Mrs. Maitland for two hours? These are the sort of questions he should have been asking her. Well, he said she couldn't remember anything. God, am I fed up with this. Bloody fed up. So we can't nail him for the other murders, so what? He murdered Julia Marsden. We found her fingerprints in his car, and we have an independent witness to say she saw Julia getting into the car half an hour before she was murdered. What more do we want? Continuity, mate. The one consistent factor that's come out of this case, as the pathologist will remind you, is that all four women have been murdered by the same hand. If Maitland didn't kill the first one, he didn't kill any of them. He couldn't have. Then how did her fingerprints get into his car? I don't know. 
Anyway, let's continue sorting through this lot. We might discover some delightful morsel of information. Malcolm! Malcolm! What's the matter? Look at our car! What's the matter with it? It doesn't look right, does it? It certainly doesn't. Oh, no. Who the... Who the... Who could have done that? It's not bloody fair. They were four new tyres. Hardly. Well, they certainly had a fair bit of wear left in them. Oh, do you know how much they're going to cost to replace? I know. More than we can afford. Exactly. <sighs> well, to be honest, Malcolm, I half expected it. But why our car? Oh, don't be so naive. The relations of men who are suspected of strangling women are as unpopular as the men themselves. I hope you're as philosophical when the bank manager asks us why we're overdrawn at the end of the month. We'll see. I hope so. But there's one thing I do know. What's that? Don't replace those tyres until we're ready to leave. Yeah, what do you make of this? What? Look at the last four check stubs. Passport, Swan and Edgar, foils, selfages. Look at the date. Last Thursday. Maitland must have been in London on Thursday. And if he was in London, he couldn't have been here murdering Julia Marsden, could he? Well, yeah, would be rather difficult. That's it, then. Conclusive proof. Well, I suppose I'd better go and see Armstrong. Tell him the good news. I knew my becoming a D.I. was only a bloody dream. But while I'm in with him, you better get on to the passport office. Make sure Michael renewed his passport personally, not be post. Right. Well, Burgess... Seems you've got yourself a bum suspect. What are you going to do about it? There are still the fingerprints in the car. You've got to find out how they got there. I don't think you're going to do that until you find Maitland, old son. There's no news of him. Not a whisper. Ugh. Now you've landed me with the unpleasant task of telling the Chief Constable that Maitland's in the clear. Can't you wait? What for? You seem to have conclusive proof Maitland couldn't possibly have committed any of the murders. No point in sticking my neck out by delaying things, is there? After all, nationwide murder hunt, very expensive. I see no point in continuing to waste the taxpayer's money and looking for an innocent man. Look, I want to have another word with Mrs Maitland. I'm sure there's something she hasn't I'm told sure us. I'm sure there are many things she hasn't told us. But it doesn't seem to matter now, does it? Well, there are still the fingerprints, plus the fact that someone had tried to wipe the passenger side of Maitland's car clean. There must have been a reason for that. You're a desperate man, Burgess. Well, what do you want? Well, can't you give me a couple of hours? Just let me talk to his wife again. I don't know. Your early promise is somewhat withered. Two hours. That's all I'm asking for. All right, then, two hours. Not a second more. And you let me know of any developments. Any little thing at all. I promise. Hi, oh, it's you again. Good morning, sir. Is Mrs Maitland in? Yes. Have you seen what some job's done to my car? I did notice. I suppose you're going to say there's nothing you can do about it? Oh, there's a great deal I can do about it. But I'll just give you a friendly warning and tell you to put your car in order as soon as possible. I'm sure you realise four defective tyres means four separate endorsements. Thanks a lot. I'll mention it, sir. Now, if I might come in and speak to your mother-in-law. Good morning, Mrs Maitland. I'm happy to say I've uh, got some good news. You found John? Not yet. But she'll be pleased to hear we've established that he couldn't have killed Julia Marsden or any of the other women. Oh, well, thank God for that. We've discovered he was in London on Thursday. There's no way he could have got back here in time. You don't know how relieved I am. But we still have one problem. Oh? Julia Marsden's fingerprints were found in your husband's car. Oh, well, that's not surprising. He knew her. He could have given her a lift any time. We know she travelled in the car the day she died. How can you possibly know that? Because our forensic department says so, and they're not often wrong. They also say there's no doubt your husband's car was used by the murderer. The thing we now have to establish is, who was the driver? But how would they have got hold of the car? Well, it's possible Mr Maitland might have lent his car to a friend on Thursday. Well, I don't know, he could have. Hang on, though. If he did that, how would he have got to London? John wouldn't have taken the car to London. How do you know? He hated driving, and he certainly wouldn't use the car if there was a good train service. So where was the car on Thursday? Don't know. I suppose he took it to the station and left it there. Oh, I wish you told me this at our first meeting. I didn't know where he was on Thursday. Did he have anywhere specially parked his car? How do you mean? Well, it's all double yellow lines round there. 
He couldn't just park it outside the station. He would have got towed away. Well, he probably put it in the car park. That waste piece of ground near the station? Mm, I suppose so. He's certainly parked it there before. You sure? Of course I am. Thank you. Shouldn't you tell Armstrong what we're up to? He can get stuffed. I want to see what we turn up at the car park before I say anything to him. He won't like it. Then he'll have to lump it. When I told him the Maitland thing had collapsed, his whole manner changed. The bastard's only had for himself. He's not interested in supporting his officers. He only wants the glory they earn for him. He's still the super. So what? I'm only a fragile detective constable. Then you've got nothing to lose. But I can still be crushed from a great height. They certainly stack the cars in this place. Do you notice they've all got their ignition keys in? I oh, did. What do you two want? Police. Oh, yeah. You find any nicked cars here that got nothing to do with me? We only park them. Who are you? The manager. What's your name? Glenn Woods. Are you here all the time? Usually. Were you here last Thursday? I should think so. You better know so, mate. Yeah, I was here. So what? I'm interested in a blue Cortina estate that was parked here all day Thursday. <laughs> How am I supposed to remember a car as common as that? This one was special. It got borrowed during the day. Oh, not from my side. This one did. And the bloke that borrowed it took a girl for a ride. So? And then he killed her. Remember anything now? No one took a car from this site. Have it your own way. Perhaps we should take you down the nick. You might remember better there. Uh, there's no need for that. I want to help. I'm pleased to hear it. All these cars have got their ignition keys in. Why? Well, look around you. There's no other way we get a hundred cars on this side. Engines. It's the big one. So if you don't open your gob and tell me who borrowed the car, I'll book you for obstruction, OK? All right, all right. Good. Look, this job doesn't pay very much. I mean, I'm all right, but the blokes who actually park the cars don't do well at all. So, to earn a bit extra cash, they clean customers' cars. So? Well, there's no water on the side. You've got to wash the car before you can polish it, you know. So where do you take them? The car wash in Craig Street. I mean, it's all legit, nothing on hand. The customers are grateful. Who took the Cortina out on Thursday? I'm not sure. I'll ask you one more time. Well, I think it was Charlie. What's his surname? Brown. Oh. No, honest, straight up Charlie Brown. And which one is Charlie Brown? He's not here today. Where is he? Uh, I suppose he's at home. He's sick. He hasn't been in since Friday. All right, Len. Where does he live? Uh, I don't know offhand. Uh, but I think I've got his address in the hut. You better have. Lead on, Len. We're right behind you. Cool, it's a miserable hole. I don't reckon this staircase has seen a paintbrush this century. We'll complain to the landlord later. This is his room. OK. I'm ready when you are. We'll take it nice and gently this time. What do you want? Are you Charles Brown? Yes. Do you mind if we have a word with you? Who are you? Police. Oh. <coughs> Do you work at the car park near the station? <coughs> well, I'm up to it, but it's... Well, it's too cold for me at the moment. The wind fair whips across there, please. This can't be him, can it? You're a bloody good actor if it is. How old are you, Pop? Sixty-eight. We've been had. Look, wh what's all this about? Were you at work last Thursday? I think so. Did you by any chance take a blue Cortina estate to the car wash in Craig Street that day? <laughs> no, sir. Len doesn't let me do things like that. He doesn't trust me, you see. Did you see such a car being taken off the site? No, well, well, I... I wasn't feeling too good, you see, and I... I spent the day trying to keep warm. <laughs> do you ever do any car cleaning? Not really. There isn't much this time of the year anyway, and, well, Len hugs what bit there is. That doesn't surprise me. Come on, let's go and get him. Now you get back to bed, Pop. What the hell is all this about? This is Alpha One to Control. Over. Control, over. This is Sergeant Burgess. Priority. I want the nearest cars to go to the station car park and apprehend the manager, Leonard Woods. Repeat, Leonard Woods. Arresting officers are to approach with extreme caution, man believed to be highly dangerous. I am proceeding to car park myself and will prefer charges on arrival. Over and out. But don't just sit there, Bailey. Get a bloody move on. Control to Alpha One. Over. Alpha One. Over. Leonard Woods has absconded driving a dark maroon Jaguar. Registration number as yet unknown. 
Alpha 5 and Delta 3 are in pursuit. Last report states Jaguar joined M1 at junction 15 and is heading south. Over. Put out a general call and alert the motorway police. If you need clearance, see Superintendent Armstrong. I'm coming in. Over and out. Well, that's it. They won't get him now till he reaches London. What a bloody shambles. Back to the nick. Yeah, only nice and slowly. I think I can wait a little while before I have to see Armstrong's face. Bailey. Yeah, just a moment. It's for you. Who is it? Radio room. Burgess? Yeah? Where? Oh, that's something. Okay, keep me in touch. Cheers. Our cars have had to drop out of the chase. They couldn't keep up with him. The motorway police have had to take over surveillance. Oh, that'll please our boys. Well, at least he won't get away this time. Burgess? Yes, sir. Right away. Armstrong. Come in, Burgess. Sit down. So you found Slippery Sam? I hope so. So do I, lad. Why didn't you tell me what you were up to? Well, there wasn't time. Things move quickly. I would say from what I've heard, they moved a bit too quickly for you. I don't think so. Well, if you had proceeded with a little more care, this character wouldn't be driving 7,000 quids with a stolen car and being chased by police from three counties. So I slipped up, made a mistake. But don't you forget I found Sam. And you wanted to keep all the credit for yourself. I did warn you about that at the very beginning. The glory was to be shared. But you decided to be greedy. You wanted to make the arrest personally. But instead we had to sit back and wait for this car to run out of petrol. All motorway. There's no way you can stop a car that's travelling at 130 miles an hour. Our lads are blowing cylinder heads all over the place just trying to keep up with him. The way things are going, they won't get him till he reaches London. Well, that doesn't matter. They'll bring him back. It's not the same, is it? If you remember, I also said that I didn't want help. I wanted the arrest on my patch. I wanted a quiet case. That's because I wanted the glory for our division. You wanted the glory for your bloody self. Yes, you blow your top, lad. You've nothing to lose. You're finished, anyway. What do you mean, finished? It was my bloody brainwork that identified the bastard. Oh, that'll go in your report, don't worry. In fact, you get glowing words all the way, but you won't get any promotion. Detective Sergeant, you're finished. That's not fair. Now look, lad, you can't take orders. You don't fit in. It's always been your trouble. You've always robbed everybody up the wrong way. Robbed you up the bloody wrong way, you mean? If you're not prepared to kiss you a stinking feet, you don't get anywhere in this division. If you don't compromise, you don't get anywhere in life. I'm top boy. You're nothing. The basic facts that you've never learnt is that my whims are more important than your desires. Armstrong. Yes? When? I see. Thanks. They've got him. At least, what's left of him is crashed. Is he dead? Yes. Should you wish to transfer to another division, I won't block or comment on your application. This would be a good time to do it, lad. I suggest you take my advice, because I don't want you around me. Have you finished? You can go. Oh, two things that might interest you. What? We found the remains of the duffel coat. Woods had tried to burn it behind the shed he used as an office. I wonder why he took it. Well, we'll never know. Thanks to you, will we? And, uh, this has just come through from the Rome police. It's about Maitland. Apparently he's on holiday there with a girlfriend. He had no idea what was going on until he saw an English newspaper a couple of hours ago. So he went and saw the local police to try and find out what was happening. Is he coming back? Yeah. When he's completed his holiday. There's no rush. Does his wife know where he is? No. I thought you could pop in and tell her. Thank you. Make it your last duty on this case. Nice city, Rome. So I'm told. When's he coming back? Next week. Apparently he isn't alone. 
wants to finish his holiday. You're not going to sit around waiting for him, are you? No. Even I realize it's all over. He doesn't care anything about me. Come back with us, Mum. All right. For a little while. As long as you like. Can we leave today? Of course. I'll go and pack. Will she be all right? Who knows? Oh, I'd better hurry those new tires along. You do that. Do you realize the only person who hasn't been touched by any of this is Dad? I know. Even that policeman seemed a bit cut up about something. But good old Dad just drifts along unhindered. Oh, my father. In the investigation of a murder by Eric Saywood, Detective Sergeant Burgess was played by Roger Hume, Detective Constable Bailey by Terry Malloy, Detective Superintendent Armstrong by Geoffrey Matthews, Jenny by Elizabeth Cassidy, Malcolm by Sean Barrett, and Mum by...